Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and uh, today I wanted to do follow up on the video that I uh, put out recently, which was about the long list for the Republic of Consciousness prize. Um, and this prize is, as I mentioned in the previous video, is a prize for small presses um, defined as being one where fewer than five full-time staff work for that press, uh, which is a very small number, um, particularly given what goes into putting a book out. And in the last one I spoke about the five books that didn't make the shortlist and here are the five that did. Um, and it's been a real, a really interesting sort of journey, seems like too big, grand a word for this, but a really interesting experience to read all ten of these books because something that I think is so fascinating is sh uh, small presses often can really push the envelope a lot more. They've not necessarily got to worry about um, Obviously they're worried about sales in some way, but they, they don't have to sort of have the next big marketable thing necessarily. They're perhaps a bit more concerned with getting these really exciting new voices out there. And I think this shortlist speaks to that. So let's get on and look at them. Also, the thing that's weirdly quite pleasing about this is I, I've been doing this by author surname order. And um, all of the ones that didn't make the shortlist were the first five alphabetically <laughs> and all of the ones that did make the shortlist were the last five alphabetically. Anyway, that's completely by the by but it made me happy. Anyway, so carrying on alphabetically pretty much, um, we have first Our Lady of the Nile by Scholastique Mukasonga and this is um, a story, a novel that is concerned with um, a group of characters um, in a in a school in Rwanda and what is particularly interesting about how this is done is we see basically the effects of colonialism and imperialism on this school because um, Rwanda as a former Belgian colony um, was a country colonized by Belgium have this sort of knock-on effect where so much of their education system um, at least in this school Our Lady of the Nile um, is um, is so influenced and so focused on the Belgian um, story. So, you know, it's expected that French is one of the main languages being taught. It is expected that you learn a certain way and also that some of the highest, uh, sort of highest up teachers in the school are going to be Belgian or European in some other form. And as a result, we see how this school sort of replicates on a sort of microcosm imperialism and colonialism more generally because um, it's, it's a whole system whereby white Europeans are placed at the top and black Africans are placed at the bottom and the effects that that then has. So I thought this book did a really interesting job um, in exploring what some of that looks like and how it impacts even how some of the Rwandan characters talk to themselves um, because you know they will compare themselves by their proximity to Belgianness or Europeanness, um, rather than kind of anything that they had from their own culture or from their own families growing up. And it kind of creates this difference that I thought was really fascinating and really well done. And I, yeah, I was quite excited to see this, um, to, to read this book, just because I think it, it, it reads really quickly. I kind of raced through it. Um, but I thought it did quite a lot of interesting things. I wouldn't say it, it wasn't necessarily a perfect read for me, uh, but I still thought it was really interesting and again really good that a small press um, can champion a voice like this, um, particularly as that's a story that we don't necessarily often hear quite as much of. Next up uh, we have a selection of short stories by the wonderful press that I always bang on about, Fitzcarraldo! Um, and this is Dark Neighbourhood by Vanessa Onwuameze. And um, I thought this was a, a really interesting set of short stories, but it's quite a difficult read at times. Essentially it's short stories that explore quite brutal moments. Um, they're quite haunting, they're quite fairy tale like um, And it's again quite hard to pin down. I was sort of reading this and sort of being like, okay, and occasionally I'd finish a, a short story and sort of think, Okay, that was interesting. I still don't really know what I just read, uh, but I loved the, the dynamism of the language to it. So, um, as long-term subscribers may know, I often can overlook plot at the expense of 
really solid, interesting writing. And I think that's what I did here. I didn't read, uh, after a certain time, I sort of stopped really trying to fully understand some of the plots of the short stories and more just sort of let them wash over me. And that was a much better reading experience, I think. Um, but still a really interesting set of short stories. We've got sort of myths and fairy tales, on, fa fairy tales and fables and all these other things coming up. But then we also have the sort of very real life situations in amongst it all. Um, and so really, it's kind of quite a bizarre collection, but in a really powerful way. Like, this is an author who I would love to see what, what she could do with a novel, because, um, you know, obviously it's a different form, and obviously not every, not every short story writer wants to write a novel, not every novelist wants to write short stories, um, but there's something so dynamic and alive about her language that I really wanted to check out, even if the short story's content didn't necessarily always work for me. Um, but it, either way, really interesting um, to see it here and really glad to have had ex an experience to to read this um as well because i got it part of as part of a fitzcarraldo subscription it came through and i was like oh, i'll read it eventually then it got long listed uh for the the republic of consciousness i'm like okay okay you forced my hand i will read this and i'm glad that i did um anyway so yeah well worth checking out i think um i know that it doesn't always work for people but can be quite a fun and exciting read nonetheless and it, it's short it's like 150 pages anyway so if you really hate it it's not that long <laughs> but i think hopefully you'll enjoy it next up um we have uh, happy stories mostly by norman erickson Pasaribu, and this uh was a set of short stories translated from indonesian um and also made the international book uh, uh long list as well um and i thought it was really interesting it's it's kind of again i so I struggle a bit with short stories, and this is quite a short story heavy long list anyway, and short list. So of the five shortlisted books, three of them are short story collections. And that feels like it's a difficult thing for me typically. I don't always love short story collections, but I did think these were quite interesting. There's quite a lot here about particularly the kind of queer longing and kind of queer experience of people sort of seeing each other across rooms, sort of people trying to figure out each other's sexualities, um, trying to work out if people might be interested, but all of that alongside kind of really practical day-to-day -day matters of sort of, you're working at a university, you're trying to get on with your job, but you've also got co-workers who are maybe getting in the way and kind of annoying you and, and all of those sorts of things. So really quite delicate and beautiful at times. And there's a real kind of humour to a lot of these stories. There's a kind of, despite the kind of, uh, the sort of sadness and tragedy that can come with kind of queer longing and kind of queer desire, there is a real sort of subtle joy and humour to be found kind of lurking in the background of it. Um, and I think the title kind of suggests that quite a lot here as well about happy stories, mostly. There is a kind of a sad thing that pulls it down, but ultimately this is quite a fun and quite hopeful collection. Um, and so I'm quite glad to see this make uh, the shortlist. Um, I think this this shortlist isn't necessarily the ones that I would have necessarily picked, but this would maybe have been one of the sort of borderline ones for me about maybe being on there. I mean, I think it's interesting and I see why it made both this and the International Booker uh, long lists. Next up, um, another collection of short stories and uh, this, the shortest book, I believe, on the long list at just under 100 pages. Oh, no, sorry, just over like 114. Um, so very, very short. Um, and that's The Song of Youth by Montserrat Roig. Um, and this is translated from Catalan and this is by um, Fum de Stampa, the press, who um, have been sort of publishing quite a lot of Catalan language literature into English. Um, so sort of the, the translations of it, which has been quite interesting to read and, and see how it all kind of comes together. Because I must admit, I don't think I've really read that many books that were originally in Catalan. Um, a lot of the Spanish language, well, you know, you know, a lot of the language we get from, the literature we get from Spain um, tends to be in kind of Castellano, right? So we don't tend to see um, a lot of Catalan literature. So this was quite exciting. Um, and I actually really enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would um, at the beginning. I did struggle with some of the short stories here. This was not a sort of perfect read for me by any means. There were some short stories I sort of got to the end and I was like, okay. Uh, but largely this collection deals with um, particularly the role of women um, in modern Catalan society, but also in sort of historical struggles. So we've got um, women dealing with things like street harassment and kind of just the sort of, this sort of kind of unquantifiable pressure kind of coming from the outside that's really hard to kind of put a voice to at times but that the characters all kind of fight through and push through 
we've got a few other characters who just sort of feel a bit lost and sort of stuck in in sort of various bits of sort of history in the current time and just overall just a, a really kind of interesting set of 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 um stories but yeah i think i did struggle with this i totally see why it's on the short list because there was one short story in this particularly i think one of the longer ones that i think it, i think it would have justified the shortlist placement based on just that short story alone because it was i thought it was really strong um but i sort of occasionally you know didn't always hit the mark for me but at the same time I know that that's a problem I have with short stories where I think I need to exist in a world for a bit longer. This is sometimes 20, 30 pages or even, you know, under that can kind of leave me feeling a bit, you know, empty handed at the end, even if it's been quite a punchy story. So uh, I but I still I still think it's quite an interesting one. I still think it's worth checking out. And I think particularly it has quite a lot to say about politics and women and history um, that I Think was sort of a good addition to the shortlist and to the long list overall. And last but not least, um, we have Sterling Carrot Gold by Isabel Weidner. And I smile here because I did really enjoy this book and I read it quite a bit ago um, for the Goldsmiths Prize, which it won last year. Um, the Goldsmiths Prize being a prize about experimental literature and sort of books that push, you know, push what literature can be. And Sterling Carrot Gold feels like it fits both both prizes really here it's a small independent press that's quite daring um but it's also you know this book that's quite experimental and kind of takes on new things um and largely the story of this is a bit of a bizarre mishmash but it largely concerns itself with um uh, well really quite, quite hard to pin down but like characters kind of trying to find themselves in this kind of slightly bombastic london um setting and We've got characters who are just, you know, really losing touch with reality. We, we as the reader start to lose touch with reality because of how bombastic some of these bits go. It's very talkative and chatty and playful as a book. Um, but we also have these moments of kind of hyper focus almost where it might it will focus on um, Justin Fashnu, who was uh, the first openly gay footballer um, and playing for sort of for like a major team in the UK and that is a huge thing and really interesting that Isabel Weidner pushed you know put, put all this focus on this one kind of character and essentially what that then leads to is a character a thing where the main character is trying to work out more about their dad by sort of interactions with Justin Fashnu because there's a sort of feeling that there's maybe something that went on this book is very very queer and very in many ways this feels like a, a queer book not only in the sense that it deals with queer themes but also in that very queer sense of sort of taking a hand grenade and throwing it at some sort of norms so what does a novel normally look like great we're going to throw a big old hand grenade at that and disrupt it um what does a what does typical character development look like nah, we're going to also mess around with that and play with that so i think this is what makes this such a daring and interesting book um and i was really glad when i saw this uh this long list come out that sterling Carragold was on it just because i think uh it's just such a beautifully underrated book um it wasn't a perfect read again for me but one that i enjoyed greatly um and i'm really excited to see what happens next for a book like it um but that takes us to the end of our shortlist and as you probably can tell a little bit by my fawning love for Sterling Carrot Gold uh, by Isabel Weidner that's probably my top pick for the win partly as well because it's a novel and uh, the short story collections have sort of ground me down a little bit here I'd also be quite excited to see Our Lady of the Nile by Mukasonga, uh, Scholastic Mukasonga um, take it just because I think it's a really interesting book but really all of them are so <laughs> everyone's a winner but really I think all of these books there's a good case that could be made um, for them winning my personal favorite I think would be Sterling Carrot Gold um, but I still think you know across the long list um, not obviously all of them are here but it's exposed me to so many new books and so many new presses um, that I think have given me some some really interesting food for thought um, that I, and uh, that I've really enjoyed as well so yeah I do hope that you consider checking out some of these as well um, I think they're all worth it um, and um, I've been Bob the Booker talking about this wonderful prize the Republic of Consciousness the Republic of Consciousness prize which I cannot say I hope you enjoy them take care and speak to you all soon bye bye